morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Once again, uh, this last minute, Pastor John put me on the spot. <laughs> He's good at that. He's good at that. He better be lucky I like <laughs> uh, So, once again, I'm, 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 I'm humble. And uh, to be able to uh, just uh, discuss God's word, and uh, hopefully uh, the Lord will be with us this morning, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. as we read these verses. Uh, we can have a word of prayer, please. Lord, we thank you for another Sabbath day. We thank you for watching after us throughout the week. Mm -hmm. I myself alone have seen three accidents in the last 24 hours. And I thank you, Lord, for keeping me safe, keeping my family safe, those here at the church safe. And uh, now, Lord, as we, uh, as we spend a little time in your word, Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit, Lord, would dwell with us, Lord. And as we commune with each other and discuss your, your goodness and your greatness, Lord, that uh, we will recognize who is uh, the supreme being. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Welcome to uh, our visitors here. Some of you look familiar, and uh, so welcome. And so, uh, my title today for our engagement, so you know this is going to be a two-way conversation here, is uh, I had two titles here, and the one is just, The Lord Helps Those Who Believe as the Lord has said. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the faith of Cain. Because mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about today. So, if we can turn back to Joshua 14. And we're going to pick up uh, as Brother Ted read, 10 and 11, we are going to start with verse 6. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Ted, and everybody please open your Bible, because we're going to, everybody's going to read a couple verses, it's all going to be, everybody's going to be involved in this today. So I'm going to have Ted start at verse 6, and in my Bible, at verse 6, it says, the title of it is, Caleb claims Hebron as inheritance. Just verse 6. No, just I'll uh, just start reading and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning <clears throat> you and me in Kadesh Barnea? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. All right, stop right there. Okay, so now we are talking about the children of Israel are in, they're in Canaan, okay, as of this point. And now some time has gone on, and now the different properties of the land of Canaan are start to being distributed mm -hmm. to the 12 tribes. Okay, and of course, this part of the land that Caleb is talking about is the same land 40 years prior, or excuse me, 45 years prior, that they went, that the 12 spies went, and the 12 spies went out to, to look upon it and came back with a bad report except for two. Who? Josh. Caleb and Josh. Joshua. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now it is now 45 years later. Sister Karen, can you pick up at verse 8, please? 
<clears throat> Nevertheless, my brethren, that went up with me, made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. Okay, stop right there. Okay, so now, Caleb is now not 40 anymore, but 40, 45, 40 plus 45 years. Mm -hmm. He is 85 years old now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's not a young man anymore. Now, uh, Sister Julie, if you could read verse 11. Give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord with be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. All right, stop right there. So now, Caleb is claiming the land that he spied out 45 years ago. And he believes what the Lord has said, and if the Lord is with him, that he should be able to drive the Achanites out just as it was 45 years ago when him and Joshua believed then that they could take the land. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now with uh, verse 13, Patricia, can you start right there? What's the cha I'm sorry, I got lost. <laughs> Joshua chapter 14. Yeah. Verse 13. Joshua chapter 14. And Joshua blessed him, and gave him to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, mm -hmm. as an inheritance. Hebron, therefore, became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, that I'll try to... The Kizanites. The Kizanite to this day, because he wholly followed, wholly followed the Lord God of Israel, and the name of Hebron. Only was Kerbet, for Ereba. Ereba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Yeah, Anakims. Anakims. Then the land had rest for more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this land, even though it's 45 years later, this land that the 12 spies went out to go see were discouraged 45 years ago because they saw giants in the land and said they couldn't, they couldn't take it. The Joshua and Caleb knew that they could take it because God was going to be with them. They didn't have a doubt. They going down there. They going into war. Most of the time when you go into war, somebody's going to die. Now we know for a fact that when the children of Israel did exactly what God said and they went into war, how many people died from the Israelites? Zero. Whenever they went into war, as instructed by God, they were never, they came back 100% successful without anybody dying. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, the Israelites were not a physical, they were not a physical people. They were not big and large and strong. I mean, we're talking about in, in the in the Achanims, the sons of Achan. Yeah. These people 
uh, help me out here, Ted. These people, we're talking about what? 10 foot, 12 giants. foot tall? Some are 15 feet. You know, we're talking about giants. Mm -hmm. So you can say, you know I mean, you can still go back and say, what, 17? Mm -hmm. We're still talking, we're still talking, which is actually, we're still talking almost as tall as Adam. Mm -hmm. Maybe not as tall, but almost as tall as Adam. I think it said that Adam was almost 18 feet tall. Mm -hmm. That's a tall man. And you're talking about a man with structure. So if God created, we're not talking about a man that's straight up and down. We're talking about a man that's width and girth. And so we're, we're talking about a group of people who can mow you down easily just with strength. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so uh, taking all of this into uh, it's a heart here. You know, what comes to mind is, is that, you know, in my notes I have down that, you know, Caleb was 85 years old now. Mm -hmm. But yet, God had, what's the word I think in uh, Patriarchs and Prophets, which I will be going here in a minute, is that he abated him, whereas is that his countenance mm -hmm. was still as, as if he was still 40. So he still looked as if he was still 40 years old, not just in his facial, but his physical, his physical being was also in the same shape it was 45 years before. Now mind you, Caleb and Joshua were the only two who <coughs> were the only two that were left from the original people from Israel who saw the promised land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that says something about his faith, which we, we will get into here. And so uh, I, I just thought that, that that scripture, all those those verses were worth reading as, as, as we go forward here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if anybody has anything they want to say on this, you know, feel free to to, to chime in because what, what we're talking about here is now that I've got a base set is that we're talking about Caleb's faith mm -hmm. his absolute mm -hmm. he was absolute 45 years later it is it, it's remarkable on uh, his faith was still as strong as it was when he believed the first time that they could take uh, this part of, of, of Canaan and so, patriarchs and prophets, now see, if this is where Sister White's writing will help you understand the verses that we have just read. Mm -hmm. So, uh, patriarchs and prophets, page 512, and it goes, Behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spake these words unto Moses. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now. Now that's saying a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I'm just as strong as I was when I was 40. Mm -hmm. so I can back it up 15 years. I'm not as strong as I was when I was, I'm 55 now. And I can't, I like to back it up to if I was 40. I was still a strong man when I was 40. Mm. Tell you what's on your mind as I keep reading. Deuteronomy 33, 25. As thy days go, so shall thy strength be. Now you got 11 foot people to deal with, that's going to be your strength. You got 14 feet people to deal with, that's going to be your, whatever you got to deal with as your days go, so shall your strength be. Okay. So now therefore, let's see. I don't want to mess up. As my strength go was, let's see. Let's see. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this mount, wherefore the Lord spake in, the, in that day. For thou heardest in that day how the Achanim... Mm -hmm were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so, be the Lord will, 
be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. The Lord. Okay, as the Lord said. Right. Once again, he believed what God was telling him. Yes. That's what we need to realize. I know I've had, and when I was studying this, I had to, and we've talked about this, and I always say, the Lord helps those who help themselves. So now I have to correct myself because actually when I've said that, I've said that for years. Mm -hmm. I've misquoted what I thought I was going to say. When I say it, I sound selfish. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said my title would be, The Lord Helps Those Who Believe As The Lord mm -hmm. Has Said. Mm -hmm. So if we believe what God has said, then that applies to us. Mm -hmm. And so. And yeah. so, uh, I thought that was real interesting, and I was like, man, I was like, I've been oh, saying man. it wrong. I've been looking at it wrong. I look, I've been looking, I've been saying it, and if somebody doesn't understand what I'm saying, they're going to say, well, well, you're really being selfish. Mm -hmm. So, I will, from here on, have to use the saying, the Lord helps those who believe as the Lord has said. Yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ted. Because the same creative power that spoke the universe into existence is in his word. So when God tells you and promises you something that you'll be able to do this or that, that creative power backs it up. If you believe it, but if, you, if you're shaking your belief, then that power's not coming. It's, mm -hmm. it's predicated on you having absolute faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay. This request was supported by the chief men of Judah, Caleb himself being the one appointed from this tribe to appoint the land. He had chosen to unite these men with him in presenting his claim that there not, might be no appearance of having employed his authority for selfish advantage. And I thought that was important too. Mm -hmm. they, you know, this wasn't about being selfish, but it was about, you know, he, he got with some other people from his, mm -hmm. I guess, from his tribe and made sure that, look, we're going down to get this mm -hmm. land that you said that I could have 40 years before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and since God can't lie, right. Joshua blessed him to say, go take that. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't even, it wasn't even an argument. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, Joshua, Joshua and Caleb, they got history. But of course, they both got, mm -hmm. God used them in different ways. Joshua to rule the Israelites, and then Caleb to show the supreme example of what God will do when you believe him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now this next part is very interesting, mm -hmm. and I think we we need to take a look at this. His claim was immediately granted. To none could the con conquest of this giant stronghold be more safely entrusted. Mm -hmm. Joshua blessed him and gave unto Caleb the son of Je Jeff, Jephunneh. say it. Jephunneh. Stake Jephunneh, mm -hmm. Hebron, Hebron, for an inheritance. Mm -hmm. Now here, 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 here's here's this line, because that he holy. Yes. Mm -hmm. W h o l l. That's full mm -hmm. body. Mm -hmm. Follow the Lord God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now what do we come back to? Complete obedience. Okay. Right. Complete, complete obedience. Even in the wilderness, <clears throat> when Caleb and Joshua really had a legitimate claim to complain about how everybody else was acting, it goes on further, which I'm going to break down. They did, which helped them. Mm. So they stayed strong <coughs> spiritually, much less physically, because God kept their, their physical attribute as. You know, it hadn't changed in 45 years. Mm -hmm. Caleb's, faith, Caleb's faith now was just what it was when his testimony had contradicted the evil report mm -hmm. of the spies. Mm -hmm. We all remember what, this, what the report was. Mm -hmm. Out of 12, only two came back with a good report and said, Hey, God is on our side. Right. We can take this right, right now. He had believed God's promise that he would put his people in possession of Canaan, and in this he had followed the Lord fully. He had endured with his people the long wandering in the wilderness, mm -hmm. thus, sharing, 
He shared his <coughs> disappointments and burdens of the guilty. Mm -hmm. Yet he made no complaint of this. Right. See, I would have been complaining. Mm. See, I, I know I would have been complaining. I'd be like, you messed up. You messed up. Now we stuck out here. Mm -hmm. You know, <coughs> now look at this. And you, you, and you know what? And you, there had to be some people out there who were doing it. Of course, most of Israel, it's amazing how gossip can ruin everything within, with, within hours. You took 12, you took, a, uh, you took 10, 10 of the spies mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from each tribe, and within hours, they had over a million people disgusted and, and, and uh, not believing what God had said. Mm -hmm. Within hours. Yes. Mm -hmm. A whole, just went through a whole tribe of Israel. Over a million people. Right. That's a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they missed out on they missed out on the promised land then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And guess what? All of them died except for Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. Right. And their families. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and brother, we have, we, once again, we don't think about it sometimes. Mm -hmm. But complaining... Is one of the worst mm -hmm. sins we can do. That's mm -hmm. right. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. We complain all the time and say, you know, you try to make a mental note. Not complaining. Stop complaining. Mm -hmm. You know, I got up this morning. I'm walking. I'm in my right mind. I'm working. I got a job. I got some money. I might not have all the money, but I don't need all the money. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because you got all the money, you got more problems. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to handle your money, then you still got problems. Mm -hmm. You know, bigger problem. Look at Elon Musk. He buys Twitter and he still got problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, he might look at it like it's no big deal. You know, because he's got, he, he, has, he has so much money, it's, it's not a big deal. But it's still a big deal. You start using, losing millions at one time or another, you buy Twitter for, what was that? Billion. 40 billion? What? 40 billion. 44? 44 billion. Okay. Excuse me, I stand corrected. Pastor done corrected me. 44. 44 billion. Mm. Yeah. That's what a B. We get it. Okay? And he talks about it may need to go bankrupt. What? Yeah, he's already made comments they may have to file bankruptcy already. Ain't that something? That's Ain't that unbelievable. Something. Well, I mean, you know, this is what, but see, this is the bad thing about people with money. They can do that and still maintain their riches while countless people will be in, in the unemployment line. Yeah. See, and they call it capitalism, which our country is known for, which makes us the greatest country in the world for that, but it also makes us the worst because capitalism only works if everybody is not greedy. And, and honest. Yeah. And so capitalism doesn't work anymore because everybody is greedy. The poor, even if you got a little bit, greedy. You know, even the poor will fight over stuff. Yes, Ted. The promise is my God shall supply all your needs, my needs. So God knows for some of us if we got uh, the amount of money of uh, uh, Elon Musk or, uh, or some of those other rich people that we'd be lost. You know, it's a possibility that we could, and a lot of those people have all that money and they still uh, have divorces and they still uh, commit suicide and jump off of buildings and, yeah, and all that kind exactly. of stuff. So it's a, a man's happiness does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. We must right. have God. Without God, you know. We must mm -hmm. God. We must have God. Brother Kurt? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You, when you were talking about the... Um, how Joshua and Caleb were the only two that made it. Uh, I mean, they obeyed God. And then they came back with a good report. And mm -hmm. they said, God, God will take care of us. He will be with us. Right. Those Israelites wanted to stone them. Oh, yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted to kill them. Yeah. Mm hmm So, and because, thank you for bringing that out. Because See how that, well, everybody got upset. The and then complaint. all of a sudden they wanted to stone them. Right. So, how things can change within, like I said, hours. Yes. 
And so, aimed all the hardships and perils and plagues of the desert, wanderings and during the years of warfare since entering Canaan, the Lord had preserved him. And now, at upwards of four score, his vigor was unabated. Wow. He did not ask for himself a land already conquered. Mm. But the place which above all others the spies had thought it impossible to subdue. He, he wanted that land because God said, because he knew, he, God said they could take that 45 years ago. Mm -hmm. So he was like, I want that land right there. Pastor. I just wanted to chime in with what you're saying. It seems like we as a human race, we still haven't learned the lessons of scripture of old because the reality of it is, I don't care if you're rich, poor, whatever it is, it seems like the majority of the human race enjoys everybody else's dirty laundry. Hmm. And they, they never talk about their, their successes in other people. You always hear the negative come out of the mouth. That's what they're spewing because that's what they enjoy. Because, you know, they, they correlate it with my suffering, as they would think. And it's, it's shameful because this whole story that you're sharing with us today, that's exactly what it is. You know, like you pointed out correctly, over a million people, Israelites, within hours, assumed this, this, this heretic uh, report from these spies, and two of them stood out and looked at it in a positive way, and they were the ones that were going to be stoned. They were the ones that the people wanted stoned. It's the same. That's what they thrive off of. We all have a tendency to thrive off of somebody's negative Verses are positive. Right. I often say, when there's a bottle of water, and it's the water sitting in the middle of the bottle, seven out of ten times people say it's half empty. Change the concept. Change your thought process. See it through God's lens. It's half full. Right. But we always think negative. That's right. Because that's, of course, TV has, in news, everything is what? Negative. It's negative. It's all negative. Most most, 90%, 95% of the time, every, everything you see is always negative. And so, uh, as we read on, mm -hmm. it says, By the help of God, mm -hmm. he will wrest his stronghold from the very giants whose power had secured. St staggered. Staggered, thank you. Mm -hmm. The faith of Israel. Mm -hmm. It was no desire for honor or aggrandizement. What is that word right there? Aggrandizement. Here? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have an abbreviation for that? Because <laughs> that's a hard word. Well, I mean, I know it means, you know. GLV. GLV. <laughs> government. The government. <laughs> that, that prompted Caleb's request. So, you know, it wasn't so he could look. Say, so, you know, look at me. Yeah. You know, it wasn't about him and, you know, I'm going to make myself look important now because I did what God, no. It says, the brave old warrior was the serious of giving to the people an example that would honor God and encourage the tribes fully to subdue the land which their fathers had deemed unconquerable. That's a strong faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. He never, he never relinquished, not for a moment, mm -hmm. from what I have read, mm -hmm. any of his faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you look at some of the points of Caleb. <coughs> One, Caleb's faith was just as strong as it was 40 years before that. Mm -hmm. Two, he took God at his word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that's something that we need to try to do more of. Mm -hmm. Good or bad. Mm -hmm. And the Bible already says, you know, you're going to have good times and you're going to have bad times. This is not, this is not the new world. So we're going to have to deal with all the problems that everybody else is dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know. What do you say, Ken? First on the floor. Yeah. You know. The economy's getting hard. This is very just because, just because, just because we know the truth and we trying to live right, don't mean we ain't gonna deal with what everybody else is doing. Right. Mm -hmm. We have, we're gonna have to suffer along with everybody else. We just gotta stay the course. Mm -hmm. okay. You know, ain't no need to come. 
Well, we complain about it. Ain't nothing to complain about because we just gonna have to ride the roller coaster with everybody else. The good thing is, is that as we ride this roller coaster, as long as we keep our faith in God, God let us know when we need to get off. <clears throat> you know, it's important that you know we're gonna have to we're, we're gonna sit there and suffer along with everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to get bad times out here, and we need to we need to stay focused as Christians. Mm -hmm. Three, he still had to put he still had to put the work in mm -hmm. in order to get the land that the Lord said he could have. Mm -hmm. Alright. I'm gonna keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants a new car. <laughs> okay. You got a job. Alright. Mm -hmm. So now you gotta save some money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you got to go to the bank and get some finance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you can get you a car. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so there's a process here of which God is working you in order so you appreciate. Mm -hmm. If he just gave it to us and we never did it, we would never know. We would never appreciate it. Right. 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 Again. Say what? It would probably happen again. Yeah. We, we would just, it's, you know, you're just going to sit there, oh, Lord, give it to me. Yeah. You know, you say, well, you need to walk across the street. Now, you know, there'd be some people say, I ain't walk across the street, Lord, just give it to me. I'm not going to walk across the street. I want it right now. I shouldn't have to walk across the street. Are you crazy? There are some preaching that message today. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. let me say, what it say is, uh, Joe Osteen is good for this. Mm. Come get your blessing. Okay. Mm. Come get your blessing. Now, you know how ridiculous that sounds? <laughs> Come get your letter. The Lord says, if you want something, the Lord, Lord said he could have it. But he said, you're going to have you got to go down there again. Because the, the, the Achanites, as that part of Canaan, was still controlled by the, the Achanims, the sons of Achan, giants in the land. And they had already been in Canaan five years now. And so, Lord said, he said, Caleb said, I go down there, I'm going to take that. The Lord said, with the Lord, he said, with the Lord, said, I'm going to go down there and take it. And he took that land. And it don't give a number of how many people he had with him. So, if God is on your side, you can say, well, you know, how many you got with you? You can just say, I got a legion with me. I got one legion with me. That's 10,000 angels. You can't see them, but they with you. There's all kinds of stories in the Bible where angels showed up. What is that? That one story where an angel came and mm -hmm. killed what? How many? 185,000. 185,000. 185, thank you. 185,000 enemy soldiers. Mm -hmm. one, one angel. angel. Mm -hmm. So if I got a legion behind me of God's angels, wow. man, that's 10,000. I ain't got nothing to worry about. I'm going down there and handle business. If that's what God said, I don't have nothing to worry about. That's right. right. I don't have nothing to worry about. And so, four, which I didn't read in there, I wrote it down here, is that after Caleb had conquered that part, mm -hmm. you know, he, he didn't even rest to enjoy that. You know, he went further and pushed on further and got more land for, you know, for his people. But... All in the glory for God. He did. Right. That's what it right. said. It wasn't for him. Right. It was to show the other tribes Amen. who were still, they were still doubting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were still, they were in Canaan and they still, and that's why Israel was never as big as it should have been. Mm -hmm. And that's why they always had problems with all the surrounding territories because they never went fully in and conquered the rest of Canaan. Mm -hmm. So that was their fault. The Lord said, it's there, go get it. Mm -hmm. If I got to go to war and God is on my side, then <clears throat> I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be fearing death, should I? No. I should be going down there full steam. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that later, uh, it talks about that, that Joshua told him, he, he didn't show no... Uh, he didn't show no favor to me. He said, Joshua said, you want that land? He said, go down there and go get it. To other tribes. Mm -hmm. So you remember there was 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I had 
two questions here. We can chit chat for a minute or not. Five says, why don't we have that kind of faith? Or do we? Go ahead, Sister Karen. Our, our relationship with God is either strong or weak. And therefore, we are going to have it or not according, be it according to our faith in God. Be it according to our relationship with him, uh, loving and obeying him in everything that he says and fully surrendering to him. That is the only way that uh, we can make it. Yeah, and I might just add to what she's saying. If you are a person that likes to complain all the time, you're going to complain when Jesus returns. So, you know, get out of yourself. Let go. Let God have it. And give him the praise. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. We don't give him enough praise. That's right. For what we do have. Right. You know, yeah, if... if uh, yeah. Yeah. So, whether it's, whether it's a lot or it's a small... Be thankful. That's right. That's right. And be grateful and share mm -hmm. what you have. Let me rephrase that. Share with what God has blessed you with right. with others. That's right. See, because it's not ours anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you uh, somebody comes knocking on your door and they want something to eat. Mm -hmm. Feed them. Feed them. That's right. You never, you never, never know. Me and, my wife, me and my wife first got married, it was, uh, we were just a couple years into our, our marriage. Somebody came knocking on our door. They didn't, you know, they came knocking on the door. He wanted something to eat and he wanted some gas. Long story short, my wife fixed him something to eat. I went over to the gas station, went inside the gas station and gave him gas money to fill, put some money in their car. I have never seen those people again. Not the car and not those people. And they had Cincinnati license plates too. Mm. You never know. Mm -hmm. We need to be very careful about, you know, when God blesses us and we turn somebody away. Big or small. Mm -hmm. You know. So my final question is, because we have not seen the works of God, as did the children of Israel, which we kind of mm -hmm. got on this morning just a little bit. Would our blessings be greater if we just believe because we haven't seen? So, you know, you take, you know, the children of Israel, they saw so much, mm -hmm. and yet they doubted the whole time. Mm -hmm. They had a, a pillar, a cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. And with everything God showed them, they still failed the course. They failed. It was individuals who passed the test, but for most of Israel as a whole, they failed. So what's that say for us? I mean, if we believe but yet not seen it, will our, will our, will our blessings be greater? That's what I'm mm -hmm. asking. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. Will our blessings yeah. be greater because we haven't seen it? We have to completely go on faith. Yes. We did not, we did not get the luxury that the children of Israel did. Yes, Ted. Oh, oh, hold on, Ted. Yeah. Man, it doesn't every day. Right. For 40 years. Yeah. 40 plus years. Right. Right. They saw all that. For 40 years, now mind you, we probably got more shoes in our closet than we need. And yet, you know, these people have one pair of shoes and never wore out. Mm -hmm. That's that that's a miracle in itself. Just the simple things that God does for us, we need to be appreciative of. Absolutely, because yeah. there's so many people in the world that don't even have a pair of shoes. Right. That's right. You know, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, there's so many, yeah, there's so many poor people 
Yes. You know, so yeah. many refugees all around the world that uh, are suffering mm -hmm. that we don't realize. Ted? Okay, there's a promise in um, Isaiah 58. I'll read it real quick. It says, um, if, you, if you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy days of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him not doing your own ways, nor finding your own pleasure, nor speaking your own words, then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, the heritage of Jacob was the children of Israel were supposed, in, when they settled down, they were supposed to be the best in every profession. Agriculture, science, medicine, whatever it was, they were supposed to be the best. And then the world would say, how come you guys are so skilled in all this? And they would point, point back to obedience to God's commandment. Now today, that, that promise has been transferred over to us. And if you'll notice, the, most people who come in this message and really believe what God said, like Caleb, and obey what the little advice that God gives on diet and this and that and, and, and going into something that you got the skill that God gave you to. Don't be trying to be a doctor to make money when you ain't got the skill for it. Don't be trying to be an accountant when you can't count except on your fingers. But whatever your, <laughs> your, you find out your talent is, you go into that and you'll be the best at it. You see? And so now when a person is the best at what they do, whether it's music or knowledge or whatever it is, the first thing people say, you think you know it all. Not God has blessed you with that gift, or uh, God has blessed you, like Wendley Phipps, he's blessed with the gift of singing like that. You don't come to the cinema, you know, you think you're all that, all the whole world is coming to, to, to hear you sing, but the man is gifted. There are lots of people that can sing, but they're not as gifted as him, and it's a, a, a no problem, a bad a, a, a character of a person who's doing the best they can with their gift, whatever it is. Whatever it is. If you're, if you're a, 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 a janitor, you, you, you mop the best you can. Right, exactly. I think the thing is is that Caleb, he had the humility of Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. Still, as he conquered that part of the land and then went on to conquer more land, actually to serve as a... It, it, it says in Patriarch's Prophet, he did that so to serve as to how God how strong, how powerful God is. That's why he went and conquered other lands for the children of Israel. He, he, he went on to conquer more land. Mm -hmm. He helped them. Yeah, he mm -hmm. helped other tribes conquer land to show them, you know, this is what God is capable of if you just believe. You know, I don't, you know, I think we take some things in the Bible too lightly. You, you have to take it, and I, you know, and don't take this the wrong way, you have to take it as if you're watching a sci-fi music, uh, not music, a sci-fi movie where you see things that, you know, you see these superheroes do and you go, wow, man, that's, I mean, you know, of course it's a movie. It's just a movie. But we're talking about in real life when you go down there with however many soldiers Caleb had, which I don't know, it didn't give a number, so we don't know. But if God is with you, then you automatically win. You just got to put forth the effort. You still have to put in the time and the work. God could have just said, well, you know, move out the way I do it for you. But then where's the faith at? You have to have the faith in order to move forward. If you need something, say, God, you know, I need some help today. Or, God, you know, I, you know I need a car. God, you know, I, I'm trying to buy a house. Okay, well, then maybe that, that better job comes along. Okay, mm -hmm. so now you got more money. Now it's how you use that money. So God puts good things in your way to help you get what you want. That you show that God has blessed you and you didn't bless yourself. So Caleb is a, a very good example that you don't hear a lot of people talk about. And I thought that I would use that this morning mm -hmm. as far as it's a... Caleb being a witness yes. that if we do, if we believe what God says, then we can go out and we can conquer anything. <laughs> See, and, 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 and that's remarkable because we ain't just talking about, you know, a little piece of land. We, you know, he went out and got 
you know, a whole city. And then he just kept going and going and going. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, you know, this is what God is capable of doing if we allow him to work through us. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it, it, once again, one word, faith. Amen. Thank All you, right. God. And with that being said, once again, it, it's my honor just to be here in front of you, you know, I'm a sinner just like everybody else, and you know, I'm not worthy of anything, but I was asked to do something this morning, so instead of saying no, I said yes. <laughs>